In this video, we're going to have a look at Activity 3. And Activity 3 is about the queries and the report. In this Unit 2 paper, you will be asked to do two queries. The first one is a fairly straightforward query. And the second one usually involves some sort of calculations and it's a little bit more complex. And then you need to reproduce one report. So let's have a look at the first query, query A, the easier one. And then in a second and third video, I'll tackle query B and the report. So query A, we need to create a query to display an alphabetical sorted list of positions that have at least two members of staff currently in that position. It must show the name of the position and the number of staff members only. So let's start building this query up and, and then tidy it up to finish. And you'll see why I say build it up, because if we do things a bit at a time and see what the result is, we know we're doing it correctly as we're going along. So let's go to access. So we're going to go to create and we're going to use query design. And you can see what's come up. We've got query one. Let's just tidy this up a bit. Top part of the window is where the tables will be. Let's just bring this in a bit and see if we can get the uh, show you where the tables are. There we go. And the bottom part of the query design window. Let's just have a look at this. We've got fields. So this is going to tell us where the fields are, what fields we've got in our query table which table they've come from we've then got the sort row and in there we can indicate how we want our result sorting we've then got the show row and in this one we can tick all right that field if we want it showing in the results or leave it blank if we don't want it showing and then we've got the criteria row and it's in here we put the questions if in um if you like uh, that we're going to ask of our data. Remember, a query basically is just a selection of data that's in our tables. And we can select the data from a number of tables. It doesn't have to be just one table. So let's just go back and think about what we've got to do on this one. We're going to create an alphabetical sorted list of positions. So we know we need TBL position in the query because that's got the positions in. And we need a sort of list of those positions that have at least two members of staff currently in that position. So we need to be able to count the number of staff in each position. So if we put TBL staff position in, that gives us all the staff for all positions that they've held. So let's just put some data in to start with. So we need the position and we know that we want that sorting alphabetically. So let's go on the sort row. I'm going to select the staff ref from TBL staff position. If you've got an option of choosing keys and things from tables, always go for a joining table if there is one there. And in this we will want to do a count. Now to do a count we need to add the total row to the rows in the design. So if we come up to totals and just click on the total button you'll see it's put total in and we know position is going to be grouped by position so that means it will group all the positions together and because we put the sort in it will put them in alphabetical order. Now for the staff ref we want to do a count. So if we click in the total row, click on the down arrow and select count because we want to count the number in each position. Let's just have a look at what we've got. So if we select the data sheet view to see what the answer is to that. So we've got all our positions. Are they in alphabetical order? Yes. And we've got a count of the number of staff. That's fine so far. 
but we want the ones that have got at least two members of staff. So let's just deal with that next. So we'll go back to design view. And in the criteria under the staff ref and the count, we're going to put greater than one. And that will give us all the ones that are two or more. So it'll just give us the positions that have got two or more staff in them. So let's run that again and see what we've got. So yeah, count of staff, we've got two, two and three, so that's fine. We're still in alphabetical order, so that's fine. Let's go back to design view. Now, the next thing is we need to show at least two members of staff that are currently in that position. To indicate to us who's in that position, we've got a position end date. We know if that's empty, they're currently in that position. Put position end date in. And in the criteria, I want it to select those that are empty. So I'm going to put is null. And you'll notice when I click off it again, as with just about a lot of things in Access, um, it will capitalise uh, what I've keyed in. So Access automatically thinks that's correct, what I've keyed in. Let's run this again, see what we've got. We've got vending machine. Let's just pull that out. Operator, number of staff, three. And all those have got a null position date. Now, the, let's go back to design view. The task said it must show the name of the position and the number of staff members only. So we don't want to show this position end date. So I'm going to take that off being shown from the result. OK, let's run it again, overview it, see what we've got. We've just got vending machine operator with three staff and they must be current staff. Let's just go back to design view and just check again what we've got. We need it to create a query to display an alphabetical sorted list of positions. So we've got position, we've got the sort sending that have at least two members of staff. So we've pulled in the staff ref, we've done a count of them, but we've also said we only want those greater than one. It must show the names of the position, which we've got show for the position, and the number of staff members only. So the count is displayed as well. The position end date is not displayed. And just a, a reminder, it said two members of staff that are currently in that position. So we put in position date and we, in the criteria, put is null. So those that haven't got an end date are only going to be counted. There's our answer. OK, next thing to do is to save the query. Let's save it. Always use QRY as a prefix for a query. And I'll call this no position i.e. numbers in position and click on OK and that's saved our query. So that's the end of query A, the easier query. In the next video I'm going to show you how to do the query B and that's the more complex query. But I'm going to be going through it in this sort of like way of building things up again so you can test things as you're going along and make sure you're getting little bits of things correct as you are creating your query.